Between the lines, they offer us a humorous history of our times. Take Peter Arno's lecherous leers at the opposite sex, or James Thurber's take on the war of the sexes, or Saul Steinberg's classic of a Manhattanite's view of the world. Now you can see the work of a rising star among New Yorker cartoonists, Roz Chast. She sees the universe through the eyes of a 43-year-old wife and mother dreaming her dreams and trying to cope with reality. And I thought, that's, that's weird. She I mean, recently offered in a talk at the Aldrich Museum, not far from her home in Ridgefield, Connecticut. This is the, the, from the Tournament of Neurosis Parade. There's the I never really broke away from my parents float. The uh, in my mind's eye, I will always be a fat, short, frizzy-haired, glasses and braces wearing sixth grader float. This is Bummer, the magazine that tells you more than you want to know. Uh, why your house is practically worthless in today's market. There's all these books surrounding this person. There's the big book of horrible, rare diseases. There's the garden of maladies. There's everything you wanted to know about scurvy, but we're afraid to ask. The story behind Roz Chast's cartoons is the story of Roz Chast's life. Sometimes it does seem like every, every action you take, there's about like 11 things that can go wrong. And so you think, well, maybe if I just don't do anything, you know, I'll, nothing will go wrong. <laughs> nothing will go wrong. <laughs> She's been sending cartoons to the New Yorker since 1978. More than a thousand have appeared in the magazine. Of course, for every hit. What do you keep in these file cabinets? This is all rejects. These are all the drawings that have been rejected over the years. Um, is that painful? Yeah, it's kind of bad. <laughs> I think you have a, as high a batting average as they've got at the New Yorker, because most issues ha have one of your cartoons in there. Um, it's, it's possible, but I always know a way light. If they do buy something, they're like that much closer to getting sick of you. She nestles into these really weird corners of domestic and psychic life. David Remnick knows all about the anxieties and artistry of Roz Chast. He's editor-in-chief of The New Yorker. Roz invented her own language, which is what geniuses do. James Joyce comes along and the novel changes forever. Um, Schoenberg comes along and music is never the same. Bob Dylan comes along, the popular song is never the same. Her own language and her own look, and I don't know how easy it is to imitate her, but she's all of herself. Chas doesn't like to leave home. She says too much can go wrong. In a room off the kitchen are her pet parrots. I know that big, that thing could be a predator, I know. It's very frightening. Upstairs is her studio. When we visited, she drew a cartoon just for us. I have to say that I think that this, this woman appears not to be necessarily thrilled with the idea of going to be... A tad concerned, let's put it that way. Chast shares her home with husband Bill Franzen, a humor writer, and two teenage children. They weren't around when we stopped by, but they often show up in her cartoons. This one, when Mom's Dance, features her daughter. One time she was in the living room and she was doing some homework and she had some music on. And I kind of came in and I was like, yeah, move into the music a little bit. And she just looked at me and she said, Mom. And uh, it was such a good line. It was such a good line. I really didn't have to change a word. Chast grew up in Brooklyn, the only child of two high school teachers. She says she found her calling at age eight. She was alone in a library and says she saw some cartoons of Charles Adams. What was it about his stuff that you liked? I think it was a little bit, uh, well, for one thing, I got his cartoons. That was a big part of it. Not only did I get them, but they were transgressive about them. I mean, just the, the, those, the whole family, the Adams family, pouring that cauldron of boiling oil on the carolers. And I could look at it again and again and just die. I can remember one, I was, I'm pretty sure it was an Adams cartoon, which is just the audience at a, at a movie. Yeah. And, and, and there's tears going down everybody's yeah. eyes. There's one guy in the middle yeah. he's grinning. Yeah, he's just <laughs> grinning. He's just grinning. I, there were so many great ones like that. Chast went to college at 
These are her yearbook pictures. She wanted to become an artist, but says she didn't think she was good enough, so she switched to cartooning. I doodled all the time in school. I think that's what sort of uh, kept me from going completely out of my head. Her drawing is as special as her humor. Old lamps, backs of TVs, chairs. The Roz Chast look was on display at a lecture she gave last year with Steve Martin. Yeah. And so I gave Roz an assignment to go to Architectural Digest, draw it as best she can. Now, you promised me that you would draw this yes. with no attempt at humors. Yes. Just to see yes. how you did. So yes. let's, let's just take a look okay. at how you did. This is... <laughs> <laughs> we have Dada and Dada. Chast cartoons have gone from magazine pages to gallery walls, and her latest work adds yet another dimension. These are Pasanke eggs. It's egg decorating. Like this one is uh, forbidden words of childhood. Shut up, stupid, and idiot. Chast recently published a book of her best cartoons. There she is on the jacket. Neither fortune nor fame has changed her. I don't mean to f feed any uh, uh, insecurity or anxiety on your part, but since what you oh, do... Oh, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever worry that you're going to sit down at this desk one day and... Uh, absolutely. I mean, I feel that way a lot, you know? I mean, when I sit down, I always feel I will never have another idea again. That is it. Still to come.